Okay, welcome to our Division H uh, Cross uh, District uh, event. Uh, my name is Aaron. I am the Division H Director this year for District 89 and also District 118. Today's purpose uh, and also this project incentive pathway 63 is actually talking about a weekly class of every single project that we see in pathways and we'll be actually going to do a breakdown of every single projects that you need to know and we we'll actually give some expert tip advice from people around the world including myself too so there will be a weekly class of two lessons per week so feel free to stay tuned we will be staying here every week 8 p.m in this session so we also have other members like Phoenix, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, Phoenix. Please unmute yourself. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, hey, I'm here. Introduce yourself in the background, a bit of background about yourself. I think he has some network issues. Don't worry about that. Uh, Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix is actually one of our very nice, decent pathway analysis. He has been doing research about pathways since pathways was launched, and he has been a very crew member in our Division H in District 118. We also have other members as well, uh, like, for example, our area director, Hilda, is also here. We also have Sandy from District 67. That will be actually also supporting me along with it. So today, the section will be broken down into two different key aspects. The first project, the first part, will be focusing on the things that you need to know about pathways. Really the key facts, no nonsense, go to directly to the main point. Point number two, the project number two will be introduction to those uh, icebreaker, which will be actually talking more about the in-depth analysis about icebreaker for everyone. So without further ado, let's start the whole ball rolling. So this is for pathways. Uh, this is actually cross division because currently I'm two division directors. Uh, it's a very massive project, and I hope that this project will reach out to the war headquarters too, so that it will be a good guide for everyone to, for a reference. Just a slight reminder: if you haven't scanned the QR code, please remember to scan it because you'll be part of this group whereby there's lots of different pathway discussions and also updates along with it. And you'll also, also see my very cute little Olive that will be also my buddy throughout this session. So he'll be actually my mental support along the way. So a bit of background about myself. My name is Aaron. I am, as, as mentioned, two division directors, also District 67 spacecraft coordinator, and I am one of the few people around the world that has finished 11 paths. So basically, uh, in terms of every single path and every single project, you can ask me. I'll be able to answer all your inquiries and also give you some tips and advice on how do you do your projects. So today we will be focusing on some key facts and notes that you want or need to know about pathways itself. Today is mainly about pathways key facts. I'll also give you a nice kickoff start about how do you choose your path as well. Please get yourself a piece of paper and a pen. Uh, there'll be quite a lot of notes for you to refer to unless you want to do screen shorts. Now, first of all is the pathway key facts. Now there are seven different, there are seven key steps that you need to do related to Pathways. Now Pathways is the educational program that has been launched and basically now is the key education program in Toastmasters International. The traditional program is currently off. So Pathway Educational Program uh, is the only education program that Toastmaster will follow. There are seven steps, as I mentioned, that to really get kickstart in any Toastmaster training. So, May I invite everyone yeah. to please mute yourself? Thank you very much on that. So now with all the steps, first of all, you need to log into Toastmaster International website to choose your path. If you haven't chosen a path, I'll also give you some suggestion along with that. Three, make sure you read your manuals. I repeat three times, read your manuals, read your manuals, and read your manuals because the manuals are most of the important elements in play. The main difference between the traditional program and the current Pathways program is that the manuals have videos for you as a guidance compared to the previous traditional program. We also have that in Read Your Manual itself, there are lots of checklists and exercises for you to go through. If you do read your manuals, you will realize that that is a treasure vault within Pathways online education resources. 
Now, fourth is a personal tip or, or rather saying a key step that you would like to get kicked off with. Find your mentor or VP to really ask to know more about your projects. If you're doing icebreaker evaluation feedbacks and stuff like that, please do ask them for some kick advice because VPs are your first point of contact other than your mentor. If you ask them for reference, they are able to give you some tips and advice uh, rather than asking pointlessly on different people and then they cannot give you the proper answer. Number five for steps for pathways, please do rehearsals for your speeches because it's very essential that you do rehearsals. It's like an exercise program. You can prepare at home, do a video live feed just like what I'm doing right now. You can record it and that will be fine for every single thing. Six, do the speeches, get the evaluations from your evaluators. And finally, the last step, register it. Repeat the whole process for the entire path, second path, and the pathways DTM. That will be the seven key kickoff step for any pathways program. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please remember to type in the chat box. We'll be able to answer your questions along the way. Now, Pathway key facts I try to summarize in very key nutshell. There are 11 paths for you to choose from. Now, uh, in the meantime, may I invite all the participants to mute yourself again, just a slight reminder, so that you will in, uh, improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of this workshop. Your cooperation is kindly appreciated. Now, for the pathways itself, for 11 paths, you see that they come with different names. Now, coming with different names is just one incentive for to attract your your visual expectations, rather saying. But every single path has its own unique feat. It comes with five different key competences. Public speaking, which relates to really about your skills and self. It in improves your interpersonal skills, communication, strategic leadership, management, and your own personal confidence. So this five competence will be in every single path. I repeat, this five competencies will be improved, included in every single path. Now for this, every single path, every single components are there. That is a slight difference from the traditional program to this pathways program for seasoned Toastmasters. The reason being that in a traditional program, there is a communication track and there's a leadership track. Now in pathways itself, we do have two other elements to play. Other than this two communication and leadership track, they break it down into level one to level five, which I'll be elaborating more on that later. Now, in this level one to level five, it includes communication. It includes public speaking skills. It includes leadership skills. It includes technical skills. And finally, it includes the all-roundedness as an individual to be more applicable to your daily lives. So these are the five key areas that you actually also focus on uh, rather than just five competencies in play. Now you may want to answer like, uh, what are the difference between all this path? I will actually have a separate slide that focus on that main point. Now there's also one point to actually illustrate in, in, in the midst is that there is something called the Pathways Mentor Program. This is an optional path. Getting it or not is your own choice. Now Pathways Mentor Program itself is something that I will highly recommend for every member to try it. Pathways Mentor Program is like an incentive. In the traditional program is actually part of one of the uh, better speaker series if I, or communicator series, whereby there is something that's related to mentoring itself. Now it has been incorporated into Pathways so that you will see much more elements in play that Pathways Mentor, it is an attempt to improve your communication and your listening skills, okay? Not just that, you're also doing a favor to coach someone else and know your own personal flaws because you will have a one-to-one -one peer coach and mentee in Pathways, it's called Prodig. So this, two individuals, you and him, will be having a very close relationship. It will also improve your communication skills, your persuasiveness that will play importantly in your career life. Now, that's just one option for, for members who want to know about more about Pathways Mentor Program. There's a separate class that is mainly for Pathways Mentor Program along the series. Now, you'll notice that in here we have some mentoring projects which require less than three months, short projects, and one long-term project which requires six months of preparation and achieving your project's goals. 
Now, as I mentioned, just now we have the five competencies there. Now, in this five competencies there, you notice that in here, I purposely take this slide out because there are different numbering systems on every single project. Now, the every numbering, it has a specific meaning. Now, you will notice that there are something like, okay, one, two, four, five, which is basically public speaking, intercommunic interpersonal communication skills, management, and confidence. Now, these four elements in play will be included in effective coaching, which is short form as effect, uh, EC. Now, you also notice that in innovative planning, so it's one, four, two, five. It also includes the four different key components in play. Now, what is the difference? Now, I have to highlight to everyone to note that these numberings do have a difference. It means that which one is highly prioritized over the other in terms of sequence from left to right. So if you see one, four, two, five, it means that management skills is highly prioritized in that project over interpersonal communication. And in effective coaching, it focuses on interpersonal communication over management skills. Now, why do I actually have to highlight that? It's because this project itself, why the numbering systems are there is because, and because there's only one key reason, the difference in every single path lies in the required projects. Now the required projects will focus on which elements in play as illustrated in these five key competencies. So that is one key thing that you might want to know about and do slightly more research on once you actually encounter this matter. If someone have to ask you some questions, very simply, pathways, can you tell me some key facts in a nutshell? Pathways. Every single path has five levels. As you can see, I have actually created a slight graph. There are five different levels for you to, to do. There are 14 different projects that you have to complete. You will also see the names of some names in the box. If you see the names in the box, it means that it's the same for all 11 paths. I repeat, if you see the names there, icebreaker, evaluation, feedback, and research and presenting, for example, these are the same for all 11 paths because there are some basics that we need to do and icebreaker, evaluation, feedback, and research and presenting are one of the key competencies to get to know the importance of doing a speech and the importance of giving evaluation to others. So they highlight these elements in play and also kindly reminded people to think about taking up the introduction to Toastmaster mentoring, the Pathways Mentoring Program at the next show, because mentoring is a key asset in Toastmasters. Mentoring actually nurtures growth, nurtures talents in the community, and also give back to what you have learned from the past to future generations. That is the Toastmaster legacy. That is how Toastmaster works for many, many years and has been surviving ever since. Now each project itself has either zero speeches, which is either a role, a table topic master, for example, which is under listed called active listening project, or you have to do one speech or two. So every project itself doesn't mean that you only do one speech, it can be two. So please kindly note of the requirements that are in play. For example, in evaluation and feedback, you will also see the point point about evaluation and feedback relates to the first speech, the second speech, and the evaluation. In total, there are three speeches that you need to do. This is the only exception because the reason why I put two speeches here is because some people may not regard evaluation as a speech. It's more like an evaluation. So that's why I put here as two speech, but kindly note that in evaluation feedback, there are three things that you need to do. Required projects for every single path are unique. The only difference, or rather saying the only one that's standing out is called strategic leadership path. This path itself is standing out because the required projects that you have to do in this path, it can be done in other paths. I repeat, 
in strategic leadership wise, the required projects of three, four, and five, level three and four and five of strategic leadership can be done in other paths. So I highly recommend that you can choose other paths. You're similarly doing the same thing as strategic leadership. Now, the only exception for strategic leadership is that it's a, a cross-cultural understanding project uh, in level two. That is the only special project that is very rare or rather saying unique in the entire pathways program. This is the only project that you can do in strategic leadership as well. And one more key thing that you need to know is that these are come uh, pathway key facts. Many people will overlook this part. I circle at the bottom. In level three itself, to complete level three, you need to serve as topic master, toastmaster of the day, and also evaluator. Many people actually forget about this because it's not highly publicized. But as an essential point for you to note, to complete level three, you have to finish this components or role takings. Confirm that with your vice president of education and things will be done very smoothly. There are many paths that has been done around the world. You can ask from people who have done it to seek for the best reference. I usually do a statistic analysis of all the paths that has been done occasionally just to check whether uh, to see the demand and supply. The reason why is very simple, to guide my members to actually see, oh, what are the more uh, popular choices out there? Or why is it chosen more favorably compared to other paths? So I usually do analysis. Oh, why do you pick dynamic leadership over engaging humor. Oh, it's because it's more all-rounded. There is a special reason for that. And I'll actually like they touch on that because of the time constraint. So for Pathways, where would people go? Now, Pathways itself to get your Pathways DTM, which is called Distinguished Toastmaster, is a one direction, one key direction that most Toastmasters will actually go for. They'll actually go for Toastmaster DTM uh, as the final goal for personal achievements. So these are the few components that you need to know. Two finished path, which is basically level one to level five. You have to be a club officer for 12 months, president to sergeant at arms role, either one of them. You can mix and match. Six months plus six months is still fine. District officer, which is one year role. You also can do a club mentor or a club coach. Club mentor, meaning that you charter a club and become the club mentor for six months, not like letting it die, meaning that it has to survive for the next six months. Club coach wise, you save a club that has less than 12 members or 12 members. Club sponsor, charter a club. Speech craft is a speech intensive program, six to eight weeks. YLP program is done in secondary schools or primary schools or universities to help members to get an outreach of what public speaking is all about. And there's something called the DTM project. Many people will be asking this question, what is DTM project? It's similar to something called HPL, which is high performance leadership. Now the difference between DTM project and the high performance leadership is that the DTM project actually focus on benefiting an organization, meaning that it doesn't need to be Toastmasters. You can actually benefit your own work, your own life, unless your life is an organization. Maybe I take that back. You also can, really focus on the things that nonprofit organization that you're helping as a voluntary work, etc. must benefit organization and your own customized project. It's a way to demonstrate your expertise after learning from two paths. That is the main reason why DTM project existed. On average for pathways, if you really want to get a DTM, uh, calculating the time and effort spent and also preparation, on average is two years. Reason because you do two full paths plus the DTM project that is 34 speeches in total. Compared to the traditional program, which is 40 speeches, this has six last speeches. However, this six last speeches is redeemably for your time. Because if you notice for all this project itself, some of them have a time limit or time to prepare. Some requires two speeches, but one is you have to talk about plan and vision, and two is after your project has been completed. So it takes a certain amount of time for you to complete, including district officer role, which is requiring your one year, that takes around two years in total for Pathways TTM. Now, a kind of reminder for key, uh, Pathway Key Facts is very important. What's past is past. Any projects that you've been using in the past, 
where I say pass, meaning that you have used in traditional program, you have achieved your HPL program, it does not count into your pathways. I repeat, let's say for example, I have done 11 paths, 11 icebreaker. It doesn't mean that I do one icebreaker and it covers all 11 paths. It doesn't work that way. You have to do 11 times. Unfortunately, this issue has been raised to TI. It hasn't been solved. So we have to keep on doing from scratch. Icebreaker times 11, evaluation and feedback times 11, and also researching and presenting times 11. So that's usually the way how it works. Now, where would TI go next? Now, with your advantage here. Now, for you, Toastmaster International actually focus on you being able to do preparations for your projects. So now you can actually see all levels from level one to level five. You can really look at all your projects. You can do it in any sequence you like. You can skip the icebreaker and do something else. It's your choice. But the reason why TI actually have level one to level five is like a foundation. For new members, highly encourage you to start from level one all the way to level five. Now, the reason why they actually expanded it, there's a second reason for that, is because some project requires six months, meaning that you can start preparing your six months project anytime during your pathways journey. So this is one way for you to consider. This is also one way for you to actually think about, well, this is one way to do so. You also see that there are different languages for all paths too. And potentially in the future when 11 paths has been done by majority of the members, we have potential new paths that will be added in place. In the past, there's something called the advanced leadership that was intentionally, that was presented as a proposal as a 12 path. But however, due to the demands of pathways, we want to focus on 11 path. That's why the 12 path has been temporarily put on hold, but there will be potential new paths in the future based on the current structure. So in short, for Pathways, uh, 14 projects per path, 16 speeches. In total for Pathways DTM, 34, which means 16 times two, two paths. 32 plus two speeches for DTM project, 34 paths, uh, 34 speeches. Now, exception here, you'll notice on the right-hand side, more than around half or less will be having one more additional speeches, which means 17 speeches. So pick your path wisely. Uh, highly recommend members to try to pick some path that you really prefer or try. Because the reason why is very simple. Usually the first path for everyone is actually not usually is free for all members for your first path. Now for first path itself, you can choose any path you like. You can talk, think about it as a, as a method to test the waters It's still okay. So think about it from a, another perspective that you're trying to understand pathways itself. But I highly recommend the following paths for your reference if you want to choose a path as a start. But before that, I'll actually introduce some tools that you can go. Now, before I move on to the next bit, any questions so far? Feel free to type your questions out. No, I will actually share the last bit of this section, the first section I was saying, is that for all new members, which path or what sort of tools that you need to think about that will help you to understand more about pathways. First of all, there is something called the pathway matrix. Uh, in District 108 and District 89, you will, should have received the District uh, 89 and 108's uh, pathways matrix. This is for your reference, and this is also acting as a guide for you to understand what sort of projects are there and the speech objectives. If you don't, please feel free to ask in the chat groups, and we'll be able to send you the latest version of it. Two, in China, there is a member or Toastmaster member who actually made an app. Now, this app actually really helpful for mainland members because they actually really consolidate every single component that you really need to know about pathways in one application. Feel free to actually go and have a look. You also find the matrix that we have created also listed there as well. Now I will I will try to utilize a bit of your my recommendations for the first few paths that you might want to like have a try. The first one is called the presentation mastery. Now presentation mastery wise, it actually focuses on the elements of public speaking as a whole for contest space. 
So if you want to be like focusing, you want to go for and win contest, uh, you want to impress your boss. Uh, these are the two components that I will highly recommend for any members to try to take presentation and master it. It's the easiest out of all the paths, and it's also the closest in terms of similarity compared to the traditional program. If you miss the traditional program, presentation mastery is like a path whereby you get the main sensation out of it. All level of Toastmasters can try it. Focus on speaking skills and handling big crowds in almost any circumstances. Now, the downside for this is that it doesn't really have leadership components in there. If you remember that according to a list we have show, shown on the pathways competencies, in presentation mastery, it only has one and five, which is public speaking and confidence. It doesn't have communication. It doesn't have leadership unless you want to customize it. So this is like an overview for your choice. The main difference for every single path as well will be actually lying in the required projects. If you have any inquiries about all different types of projects and its own insights, feel free to stay for the future masterclass. We'll be actually breaking down every single project in detail. But this is just an overview for everyone's reference. Now, number two will be innovative planning is a very nice path for everyone who wants to challenge yourself, especially in the limitation or the consider uh, all the circumstances that we do have faced in the in the current situations, such as for example, COVID-19 striking us very deeply, innovativeness will be essential to make our own breakthrough. Just like for example, if we don't think about something new, we'll never grow and learn and improve ourselves. For in my past, I've been trying my public speaking speeches. I've done a lot of different contests, but I know where my limit is. It's until I start to explore and travel around the world in different Toastmasters situations or story or, or journeys that I start to see different ways of speaking techniques, different ways of cross-cultural communication, different ways of different personality that will affect the input and output of every single speeches. So this innovative plan actually focus on your innovativeness or your new ideas of doing a speech. So for members who are DTMs or members who have done advanced speeches, you can go and take innovative planning because this is whereby you you'll get your ta limit tested and also changing yourself in terms of turning impossibility into possibilities. It also helps you to train a new mindset called open-mindedness. If, for example, in the past, I have been quite close-minded, inverted too. I don't really like to converse. I just want to focus on my technique as the best of the best. However, with this innovative planning, I always think about there has to be always something better out there that I haven't explored. It kind of changed my personality in some way. Now, this is very challenging for new members. Don't try it because you have something called the high performance leadership at the end, which is uh, very tough for new members. When I say new members, meaning that you have not been Toastmaster before, you just joined Toastmaster recently, innovative planning will be quite hard for you. But if you still take it, don't worry, I am Mario Courage. Try to ask us for some reference and feedbacks. We were able to guide you through. This is the list of innovative planning whereby you will actually see that high performance leadership is at the level five, which is like the final boss in terms of this path. Now, last but not least, I will highlight to for everyone's reference for the path choice will be dynamic leadership. Now, dynamic leadership is actually quite an all-rounded path whereby you get to understand yourself more. Now, how many of you, just by a raise of hand, how many of you think that you know yourself enough? Okay, we have lots of people quite shaking your head. Now, dynamic leadership is one of the paths that I find very beneficial in understanding your uniqueness, your challenges, and your limitations. Now, it's like a more like a self-reflective journey. Now, dynamic leadership, the reason why I say it is like, I highly recommend this, is because in dynamic leadership, you're able to find four paths. Okay, four, okay? Four different paths, key aspects in just one path alone. So you're doing like one path for the price of four. So you get to learn persuasiveness, you get to learn about all round the techniques, you get to do lots of leadership projects too. However, the downside for dynamic leadership that you may want to, you may discover eventually is that you only just 
evaluate and test your limits. It, or rather saying it actually un help you understand more about yourself. It doesn't have a specific focus. So you don't see anything that's standing out. Like compared to presentation mastery, you have one thing that's standing out called you can win your speech contest. But for dynamic leadership wise, it's just training your all round the skills. Uh, in Chinese, it's called, we may be training in something called the Bantong Sui. <laughs> we do not want that sometimes. But for a first part, it's highly recommended also to try this because you get to know yourself more. You get to know where, where your skill sets are. And once you discover your weakness, choose the second path that focused primarily on your weakness. This is one path for your reference. My, this is for your reference here as well. You will also see that negotiate for the best of count, it actually focus on persuasive skills and also listening skills too. Manage change, you'll see that it will be in innovative planning and also visionary communication. And finally, lead in any situation wise is also listed in the leadership path itself. So that's why I said the power of four. You may actually think about this actually not just stop there. It also have presentation mastery as well. So you may think about that's five too, but this path is highly recommended for all. It's also useful for all new members too. Finally, last one bonus is that it's my personal favorite, engaging humor. I'm someone that never make people laugh and I don't make people laugh. I'm a very boring person, extremely boring, but then humor is something that I want to improve and want to challenge myself on. So engaging humor is actually for many members who wants to add some interesting elements in your speech. You want to create pauses for members to think about, I want to digest what you say. So engaging humor um, for members who usually speak quite fast. Okay, quite fast. Uh, just speak nonstop, may ignore the feelings of the audience. Engaging humor is the element whereby it gives you a nice connection and interactiveness. It focuses on communication basis more. And it also helps you to make a lasting impression with humor. Okay, obviously humor wise, you have a good crowd that may like you, you may have a bad crowd that hates your jokes. So this is the downside of it. So you need to have different stories to help you to understand more about engaging humor stories itself. So this is, this is one whereby I will just like, it's not there, so don't worry. But mainly it's about the engaging humor that you can try it. These are the four pops that I may actually recommend. And in short, there are lots of things that you can think about in terms of path. And I hope that members will be able to have a nice kickoff through this. So this concludes the first section and feel free to ask any questions before we move on to the next section. Any questions so far? Feel free to unmute yourself. You can ask your questions here. We'll be able to help you answer. Hi, Martin. Hi, you are really smart and it was a nice overview of all the pathways. But for example, how can you or can we encourage our members to track their their pathways? For example, to I will do this speech, this because you are so calendar calendarized and all that. Do you have as your app? What do you have to make the members more focused on their pathway? You mean a member you mean like telling them to focus on their own path, like telling the highlights of every single path or what, is that what you mean? Yeah, to highlight and also to track their own pathways, to say, I will do this, this week, this, that month and all that, to just to be in advance what they are going to do. Okay, so first of all, you can actually utilize the pathway matrix. The pathway matrix, you can actually see what sort of projects that you have to do. And two, to encourage members to really try about pathways, it really takes a lot of different experience sharing. So for example, I will actually want to actually encourage members to try to do a project called manage a difficult audience. Why? Because in Manage a Difficult Audience, for members who have actually heard my speech before related to this one, I actually did a speech related to this one part by besides a swimming pool. So my challenge for the members is this. Audience, please do whatever it takes to distract me from doing a speech. So I have a lot of different difficult audience for me. Some of them actually push me into the swimming pool. Okay, I was drenched and I still have to do speeches. I was actually thrown, you know, those eggs. Imagine a simulation whereby you're well hated by the community. People throw eggs at you just to disturb you. There are some members who will hackle you. 
But then the thing is about is about experience. You're able to do when you do it, you are able to have these juicy stories to attract members to think about. Things are not that simple. It's about you to think about how to simulate all the interests of doing that project. So this is one part of presentation mastery that you can think about. And it's also one of the important elements in play that it's you who define how you use a tool, not the tool that defines who you are or where you're going. So uh, this is Rosalind. So in case in that, if somebody do that speech, do we need to pretend to be the difficult audience? Yeah, so well, something you, challenged. We usually have, for example, like uh, what I do is I will actually tell the audience beforehand, say that please be nasty to me. Really, just try all your all your different ways of distracting me, because the main focus of this project itself is focusing on your concentration. It's focusing on delivering professionally. So if you're disturbed by all these different people, it also shows where your limitations are. And then you also reflect how you improve next time. So this is the one way that I actually do, uh, although they are generally very nice, but then I would just tell them, maybe you hate me in the past, or maybe you, you just don't like me today, uh, but I know that you're very angry. So just put your negative emotions in there and distract me from my speech. So that actually makes a very nice story to tell others too. From eggs, uh, also uh, kissed by a guy. Yes, uh, that's very unbearable too. As also lasting impression too. That's for that's that project alone, five to seven minutes speech. Everything happening within seven minutes. Think about it. So, so yeah. like you, you are so smart and you're ready to be challenged. So if in case our members so do that speech, they probably do not prepare for that. So do we deliberately challenge them to the limit? Uh, it's up to them because some members do not like challenges. Some members like to try and test the waters. So it's really about the speaker themselves. Like for example, if I'm just one person that wants to try a little bit about managing a difficult audience, uh, members just heckle me. I'm just trying this. Please support me by constructively heckling me. So they will actually, the audience will know where the limit will be like. So they will not push that far. But once you set the limits, like, please do whatever it takes to distract me from that speech, then they know where the limit, the bar is. Oh, and this is just only one project. That's 63. Okay, that's 63 different projects for you to really analyze the whole thing. Yep, I hope that will solve it. Now, uh, before we move on to the next session, uh, which is introduction to icebreaking, which is basically the icebreaking project, I would like to kindly remind everyone to scan the QR codes for members who are late. Don't worry, we have a QR code for members in Hong Kong and in China. Okay, and also globally. For WhatsApp groups, please choose the left-hand side to scan. For members who are in mainland China, please remember to scan the QR code for WeChat group. Uh, final one minute before we move on to the icebreaker. Okay, the one minute is up, so don't worry. Now, please feel free to remind members now uh, that I will actually 